something where you start your day off and the ritual that you may go through, what's the first thing you do? You just uh, wake up and you head for the bathroom or you get the coffee going or turn on the TV or you look out the window and check the weather or you think about exercising and then you think again and say, nice idea, but no way. You see, this may be our morning routine. Benjamin Franklin said, I wake up in the morning at 9. I grab the morning paper. Then I look at the obituary page. If my name's not on it, I get up. Robert Frost, an American poet, shared this. The first thing I do in the morning is I make my bed. Then I make up my mind. He's got some good advice. For to make up our mind is to wake up our mind. And how important that is that we have a ritual, a routine every morning that includes waking up the mind. How important it is for this is the best plan for each and every one of us to set the course for a great day. Because to wake up the mind, to make up the mind, is to cause your uh, mind to begin this awakening experience for its highest and best. Now, people are the most productive when they first wake up. They say that tests would prove to us that we can accomplish so much more. We become very productive in those first moments of our day. So the key is that we are also so productive in the first moments of our spiritual awakening, the awakening of the mind, the thoughts, the consciousness, the very sense and awareness of the divine presence of God. In that moment, we are the most productive when we've begun from that perspective to say, I wake up, I make up, I do it so that I am alert and conscious of all that God has for me today. Today's text that you read so beautifully says, Awake, you who are sleeping. Rise up from the dead, the Christ, and Christ consciousness will give you light. This is what it's all about. Wake up, rise up from that place of being dead in thought, dead in consciousness, not truly aware, not truly awakened to the highest and best. And the promise is, when you are awake, God's wonderful light is there for you. That light is wisdom, insight, truth, and understanding. For years, I had a little wake-up routine and ritual with my kids. I would uh, knock on the door, come into their room, burst into song with, it's a happy day, and I thank God for the weather. It's a happy day, living it for my Lord. It's a happy day, things are going to get better. Living each day by the promising, promises in God's word. Yes, and the kids would all, you know, put the pillow over. Oh, Dad, not again, you know. They remember it to this day. I torture it with them every so often. I'll call them and burst into song early in the morning. Uh, and assume that you were teaching that on to my grandkids, of course. No, Dad. Well, that was the morning ritual that we woke up to. Waking up to this consciousness, this awareness. It's a great day, and things are going to get better. And just hold on to live to and embrace the very promises of God because in that experience, in that kind of awakening within us, we set the course for an amazing day. So here's some simple steps to help us really wake up. You know what they say? That's really great that to wake up the mind, get it alert. It's really important that you start exercising, getting the blood flow moving through the body. It helps to make the mind and the brain work even more clearly. It helps to awaken consciousness within us. So it's really great to think about some morning exercise. So today, I'm going to ask you if you'd be so kind as to let me be your spiritual Jack LaLanne. Uh, can I be your inner Richard Simmons? Can I be your mystical Arnold Schwarzenegger? Because in all of this, what I'm trying to do is teach you some sort of exercise in the spiritual journey of our life to awaken the mind to its highest and best. So if you're ready, here's our exercise routine. Are you ready? I want you all to drop down and give me some John 1030s. What? John 1030s? What are John 1030s? Are you talking now, Pastor, about some new yoga position? No, I'm not. Is this a jumping jacks routine sponsored by Jack Vallane? No, it's not. Are you trying to give me some praiser size? And you know those churches that do praiser size. You know, up to Jesus, up to Jesus, down to heaven, down to heaven. You know, give me some glory to God, up to Jesus, up to Jesus, down to heaven. You know, I'm not talking about that at all. 
It's not praise or size. I am talking to you simply about this, some spiritual exercises that are transformational. Some John 1030s. What is that? It's beginning our day with this very thought that Jesus expressed in that passage. I and the Father are one. I and the source of all good are one. I and the infinite intelligence are all one. Say that with me, okay? I and the Father are one. I and the source of all good are one. I and infinite intelligence are one. You're pretty good at exercising it, but some of you got a little lame. Got to put some energy in it, okay? If I'm going to be your spiritual coach here, and we're going to have a Jack LaLanne experience, if we're going to really be here, the Arnold Schwarzeneggers of our spiritual life, if we're really going to awaken the Richard Simmons within us, we've got to then speak it out with some power, authority. Let's say it again. I and the Father are one. Wait a minute, you can do better than that. Come on. I and the Father are one. All right. I and the source of all good are one. I and the infinite intelligence are one. What are you doing? What are we doing when we say these things? What we're affirming, yes. What we're doing is we are expressing an identity. We are identifying with. And how important it is because when we identify, we establish or indicate who we are. So if we begin in this first exercise of the waking up experience, we've crawled out of bed and all we begin to say, wake in the mind with I and the Father are one. Wow, you've just expressed your identity. You have identified who you are. You are in oneness with all that is of God. Not separate, not removed, but in oneness with the all good, with the very grace, the love, the peace, the passion that is of the divine. It's all yours. And you're identifying that you're one. What you're really doing is pinning it down. You're pinpointing it. You're putting your finger on it. You know how it is? How important it is. People say, I can't get my finger on it. I can't really say it clearly. And that expression, what it really means is to identify with great clarity. I know who I am. I describe myself this way. And I associate myself in this way, that I am one with the Father today. I am one with all of that good. I am one with all of that love. Boy, does that shape and begin to awaken the mind and have to shape your thoughts for the day ahead. Remember, waking up the mind is not just filling up the mind. So we're not just filling up the mind with stuff. We're waking it up to its inner knowing, inner truth. Inner relationship, shall we say. It's like putting the key in your car and turning the engine on. It's that simple as that because what happens is the power is already there within the engine. Everything is already there. You're just now igniting it by turning the key. So it is when you're waking up, you're not filling your mind with stuff. You're awakening it to the power that's already there, the presence that's already there. God will never leave you nor forsake you. God did not leave you while you drifted off to sleep. God did not forsake you and go off in another direction while you were resting or lying in bed. The power and presence of God is always with you. It's sown in you. It is woven in you. You are created from that divine likeness and image. That very presence is there. So when we understand that, what we're doing is waking up to what is already there within us. I can't emphasize this enough to tell you that Within you is all the love you'll ever need. Within you is all the grace you'll ever need. Within you is all the patience you'll ever need. Oh, that's right. You may think, give me more patience, Lord. It's already there. Go within. Awaken it. Wake it up. Don't fill the mind with things that, oh, I should have patience. No. Awake the mind to knowing I have patience, and I put it into practice. I'm going to wake up to the goodness. I'm waking up to the power. I'm waking up to the love. That's what's happening within us as we allow us to wake up to what is already there. You don't give yourself credit for as beautiful and divinely created as you are. You are already gifted. Wait wait a minute. I don't feel very gifted. I don't feel very valuable and uh, fabulous, and I don't feel very talented. But you are. You have to awaken to what's already there within you. 
that the Spirit of God says, I have always seen, I created you with that. I see it. You would love it if you would see it too. That's what the Spirit of God is saying to you all the time. So wake up to it. Wake up to understanding power, presence, goodness already within, deep within you. For you are a thinking center within this divine mind. Now let's grasp that for a minute. All of God is everywhere, right? There's not a spot where God's not. Don't we say that? God's everywhere. God's in you and you and you and you. That infinite mind is everywhere all around us. And you are within that infinite mind. You are the part of that wonderful diamond that we could call the divine. And you are a facet. You are another facet. You are a different facet. And each facet reflecting the divine in some unique and different way. But we are all within the divine mind. And within that infinite intelligence we call God is our mind. Wow. All of God is there. I am in that. All that is around me, in me, through me, and for me is the divine mind. And I'm part of that. When we say divine mind, you know what I mean? But infinite wisdom, divine intelligence, that brilliance, that magnificence, that mind that knows the highest and best, that infinite wisdom that will unfold within our lives as we simply allow it to take place. Our divine mind then is all of God. It's a, this divine mind, this divine wisdom, this divine intelligence, it's all around me. I turn this way, there's divine intelligence. I go this way, there's divine intelligence. I go this way, there's divine mind, knowing, wisdom, understanding. I go that way, it's there too. You see, I am centered in it. It's my environment. It's the very context that I live in. It's my world. It's where you as a spiritual person truly dwell. And we have to wake up to this wonderful understanding. So we wake up, we drop down, and we do some John 1030s. We get up there and say, I am one. I get it. I now understand it. I'm not separate. I am uh, We're living within the realm of this divine mind. Now get ready. We drop down. Now I want you to jump up and get ready to do some Joshua 2415s. Come on. Everybody ready? Some Joshua 2415s? What are they? Choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. So we have proclaimed, first and foremost, I am one. Now we have to understand the power of that choice within that oneness, within the realm of the divine mind, within the realm of God's intellect, God's wisdom, God's infinite knowledge that's yours. What will you choose? How important it is that we exercise every single day this very journey of making choices, that we know that we can become the master of our day versus the slave, that we become the creative thinker instead of the reflex thinker thinker, the one who is just responding to whatever that's going on. So within it, we understand the importance then of making that choice, taking responsibility for our thoughts. Ooh, that's a good wake up exercise right there. I take responsibility for every thought that comes through. Ooh, could you say that? Let's say it together. I take responsibility for every thought that comes through. That means I take ownership of it. And when I have a thought that, well, I'm not so crazy about, do I own it? I release it. I let it go. I just don't hold on to it. I'm responsible for the, th the thoughts that come through my head. So I don't want to be entertaining those thoughts that constantly echo over and over again. Problems. I want my thoughts to be centered on solutions, right? How important it is that we make this change. We let go of these thoughts of worry and stress and fear. But instead, we awaken the mind in the very early mornings to say, I choose right now that this day is a day filled with thoughts that empower me, strengthen me, release my highest and best in it. Because what happens is most of, of the uh, people in our world live in a realm of what we would call as pastors, crisis Christianity, or they come to God in the midst of problems. They're always thinking problems. They're always dwelling their mind on the problems. I have very few people come to me and say, hey, I'm coming to your church because of, I've got lots of solutions. Most people say, Pastor, I haven't been in church for a long time, but I'm going through some problems. I lost my job. I start coming back to church. I lost my partner or husband or wife. I'm coming back to church. I'm financially broke. I'm coming back to church. Leave me alone. 
I'm, you know, all this kind of thing. They're coming back to church. You see, we come back in the midst of our problems, not always in our solutions, because we've entertained so much of our thought life focused on the problems we have versus how, focusing on the solutions that we live within. And the new thought journey, the teaching that we offer in metaphysical understanding is really the science of problem solving. Problem solving. That we're understanding how it is to solve the problem by through our prayer treatments. We understand how to solve the problem by turning our mind and renewing our mind over to God, our thoughts. We know how to solve the problems. We want to demonstrate constantly. And so sometimes we get caught up and we think that we're just there for the purpose of our of truth is just to solve problems, and it's not. There's something more. It's just like you don't eat just to solve the problem of starvation. You eat because you want nutrition to care for the body. There's something more. So we study truth not just to solve problems. We study scripture not just to solve problems. We study and learn more about God not just to solve our problems, but to nurture and strengthen the very soul and being to its highest and best. And Jesus said, take no thought for what you should eat or drink for the morrow. In other words, get your mind off the problem. Begin to choose a new way of thinking. Make that choice clear and move it now that my thoughts are all on the problem solving. And even beyond that, let's move to the next level. I'm not even in problem solving. I'm just in God. I'm just in God. I'm not... Now, in the midst of focus on problems, focusing on answers, I'm just in the midst of the divine. Because in the midst of the divine, all things are working together for good. So we don't even have to work or worry or think or fret about problem or trying to engage solution. We just know it's already unfolding for us. You know that, that beautiful illustration, you're in good hands with all stay, you know? And that beautiful picture of, of the hands there, and we think about, oh, how wonderful to be in that place. And that's the way we wake up in the morning and go, that's where I dwell. That's who I am. I am there. I'm in the divine presence. I am in the hands of God. I am one in this wonderful consciousness with all the good, and I have nothing to fear, nothing to worry about. So I don't even have to think about what's the solution to the problem. I just think I'm in God. And all things are good. And I live in the goodness. And whatever comes to me, I just say all things are good. All things are God. And I live in the goodness. And that's the exercise that we do that really helps to shape the awakening experience. To awaken the mind to a new level. Okay, are you ready? Here's your next exercise. Come on, everybody. Jump up and let's do some Philippians 2 fives. Everybody ready? Come on. Let's get some energy going. Some Philippians 2 fives that work for us. What are they? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. We identify, I am one with the source. We make good choices with our thoughts. But what the, the catch that we have with all of our experiences, uh, letting, allowing, Letting this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. It's interesting how many people want to go to church to, to praise Jesus, but certainly not to do Jesus or to do as Jesus or to live as Jesus or to be Jesus. We just want to go to praise Jesus. We want to be part of that group that's the praiser sizes, right? Hallelujah, hallelujah, shake a tambourine. Let's all go. Come on, jump up and down. Let's hallelujah, hallelujah. What, be kind to one another? Are you kidding? Be compassionate and think about the world around us? Not a chance. Are we interested in really offering grace and forgiveness? I won't forgive her. You see, we get caught up in that kind of lifestyle where we're all so much about uh, thinking about Jesus as the way and the truth and the life for us and not really thinking about what's the way, what's the truth, and what is the life, and how do I live it out to the fullest? So the passage and this exercise in your routine that's as good as stomach crunches, that is better than knee bends, that is hard, uh, wonderful for your body, better than squats or chest presses, 
It's this wonderful exercise for you that simply I let the mind of Christ be my mind. I let the Christ of mine be mine. In our class, we constantly have said, we need some T-shirts that says, you've got the mind of Christ, now use it. You know, how often that would say, you know what, really think about it. You got the mind of Christ, now use it. Come on, come on. Let this mind be in you. Let this way of thinking be in you. Let it consume you. Let it dwell within you. I'm going to think and live as Christ. I'm going to think and live with a consciousness that says I'm fully aware of who I am. I am the child of God. I'm going to live and I'm going to let, I'm going to allow this type of consciousness to be mine. That awakening, positive thinking then is really attuned to our great potential. What we do is, in our struggle quite often uh, to be positive, we may say all kinds of things and we think, I can't think a negative thought. I can't think a negative thought. You ever be around those really positive people who like, Ooh, they would like to say something negative and they're going, ah, ah, ah. I, oh, I'd love to tell you what I'm really thinking, but oh, I'm thinking positive. I'm going to be upbeat. Hey, it's a sunshiny day. You know, I love you. You know, oh, I'm just so full of wonderful, positive power. <gasps> Deep inside, the mind is saying something different. There's a negative thought there. I'd like to tell you off or tell you something or say something. I want to tell you this, that uh, what we have to do is disidentify with those things. Because even Jesus had a negative thought. Jesus entertained the thoughts of an adversarial energy, presence, the devil, Satan. He said, get me behind me, Satan. In other words, get me behind me with that thought. Get me behind me with that crazy way of thinking. Get me behind me with this kind of negative, stinking uh, approach to life. I don't want any of that. I say, get it behind. I'm moving forward. I don't want to entertain it anyway. I disidentify. And we identified with the fact that we are one with the divine source. And now we disidentify, saying, I deny that I am any part. I don't want any part of association. I don't want any connection with this negative kind of thinking. How many times have you thought throughout the day, I'm stupid. I just don't get it. Especially for those of us who are looking at our computer and can't figure out how uh, to turn it on or turn it off, and we get struggling with it. We're thinking, wait a minute, we're just stupid, you know? Uh, and that's not the case because you are filled with infinite wisdom and knowledge. So what you need to stop and stop saying this kind of stuff, disidentify with those kind of thoughts that come to you. Say, I'm not going to even entertain that way of thinking. I know the divine mind is around me. All of the wisdom, the infinite of God, the wisdom, the knowledge of that is of the universe. It's around me and I'm in the midst of it. I just need to let this mind be in me. I need to allow this kind of thinking, this Christ consciousness, this awareness to be mine. Okay, you're doing really great with this physical fitness. Anybody sweating already? Anyone got your heartbeat going? You got your uh, energy going? Endorphins going through you with all these wonderful spiritual exercises? Are you feeling energized? Because here we go. We got the last one. Let's do some Philippians 4.8. Everybody ready? Some Philippians 4.8. Come on, let's exercise. Let's get up and move and move and move with a Philippians 4.8 movement. What is that? Discipline your mind. That passage says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if it be any virtue, be any praise, think on these things. You know what? This is about the discipline that we put to our consciousness, to our mind, to our thinking. We have disidentified with the negative thought. Now we need to discipline, take control of our mind, of our thinking, of our spiritual unfolding and say, you know what? I'm going to tell my mind, oh, behave. That's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say, mind, you need to behave. I'm going to be disciplining you. I'm going to be telling you. I'm not thinking those things. I'm not entertaining those thoughts. I'm not welcoming those experiences in consciousness. Instead, I'm saying, mind, you need to behave, you know? Now, you all got up this morning. I believe you probably took a shower, I hope. Um, 
you groomed yourself, you're looking really great. Because, wow, look at how fabulous and, and beautiful you are. Just the same, did you take time to groom the soul, the mind, the spirit of who you are? Did you awaken it to this level that it needed some discipline? Meaning guidance. I'm not talking whip that mind. I'm not talking spank that mind. I'm not talking get in there and try to like uh, punish it in some way. I'm talking to you to say simply give it guidance. The discipline that is so needed in our world is not a discipline of punishment, but a discipline of setting forth guidance and instruction. So I set forth within my mind this very principles. I'm going to do some Philippians 4 8. I'm going to do lots of those. I'm going to start thinking right now. Whatever's true, I'm thinking it. If it's true, I'm thinking it. I'm holding on to the promises of God. They're true, I'm thinking it. Whatever is honest, I'm going to think that. I'm going to welcome all those things that are noble. I am setting the course and disciplining my mind to think what's right and what is pure, what's lovely, what's admirable. Those things are of a good report. That's what I'm taking my mind. I'm going to discipline it so it's focused. It's, in, it's channeled in this right direction. So when I wake up in the morning, I have this wonderful clarity that's gifted to me, this wonderful experience. I'm awake, and I'm at my most productive. I'm spiritually alert. I am awakened into the presence of the divine. So today, I'm offering you this exercise assignment every single day. I encourage you to do these wonderful workouts of I identify. Identify. The Father and I are one. I choose. I'm going to do this workout. It's full of making good choices in my thought life. Number three, I attune. I align with. I get in order with. I am really doing this exercise where I am feeling that there is no separation between the Christ consciousness and me. I let this mind be in me. And lastly, I discipline. And in that discipline, I awaken my mind to the highest and best. John Maxwell said, the secret to your success is found in your daily routine. The secret to your, I got you there. A secret to your success. I know some of you are falling asleep there, but sex, what, what, what are you talking about now? All of a sudden, everybody woke up. Okay, all right. I know exercise doesn't interest you, but sex is exercise. Okay. The secret to your success is found in your daily routine. The spiritual routine for awakening that you engage in every day. The spiritual routine that says my mind is engaged and I am thinking the highest and best for the day to unfold. So the scripture is alive for us saying, awake you who are sleeping. Rise up from the dead. And the Christ consciousness will give you life. Amen.